Welcome to the last section of our course. In this section, we will cover how to build web applications using powerful third-party libraries in the Go language. In this section, we'll have a look at the Gorilla Toolkit, which is a very popular package to use in web applications in Go programming. We will see how we can use Gorilla to write powerful, efficient RESTful APIs. Then we will build the front end for the Dino project. The Dino project will use a non-trivial front end, which will involve the usage of templates and web sockets. Now let's start with the first video in our section. In here, we will learn how to use the Gorilla WebKit or the Gorilla package to create powerful web RESTful APIs. In this video, we will start by covering the definition of RESTful APIs. Then we will take a journey into the Gorilla WebKit. So what are RESTful APIs? So RESTful APIs is the idea of using web technologies to exchange messages between a client and a server. So similarly to uh, web applications, RESTful APIs, web RESTful APIs to be more specific, use the HTTP protocol to communicate. So you end up with a variety of uh, web clients who uh, could be just using a web server or it could be a running uh, service, software service, that makes use of the HTTP uh, protocol. So a RESTful API client, uh, a web RESTful API client to be more specific, doesn't have to be a web browser. Any piece of software that can speak HTTP can communicate with RESTful API servers. RESTful APIs are used in modern microservices architectures because they provide a universal protocol for services to communicate with, with the outside world. So in this uh, diagram here, you see a bunch of uh, RESTful API clients or web clients that communicate with a RESTful API server or a web server. The web server will handle the incoming HTTP or HTTPS requests, and HTTPS being the secure flavor of HTTP, and then it will send an HTTP or an HTTP response back to the requesting client. So what is the HTTP protocol? Uh, the HTTP protocol is an application level protocol that sits on top of the TCP protocol. So it uses an IP address and a port number to communicate. The HTTP protocol has multiple components that define it. Uh, but for the purpose of understanding modern uh, RESTful APIs, we will discuss two main components of the HTTP protocol. And those are the headers and the methods. So headers are basically pieces of information that get attached to HTTP requests getting sent at the beginning or at the header. We can use header to identify the type of the uh, HTTP uh, request being sent. So for example, uh, if we're expecting uh, the HTTP request to be sending a JSON object, we can define a header to specify that the HTTP request body contains JSON data. The next component for HTTP that I would like to discuss uh, would be the HTTP method. So there are multiple types of HTTP methods supported by the protocol. However, in the world of RESTful APIs, there are four main method types that get used frequently. And those are the get method, the post method, the put method, and the delete method. So the get method is used to obtain a resource from a server. You can use a get method, for example, to obtain uh, the information about a certain customer from a RESTful uh, API server. 
So you would send a GET request with a specific URL that defines uh, the address of where you would like to send the request. And then the server will respond with the customer information. Post and put are typically used to add or request adding information to the RESTful API server. So for example, I can send a POST request to a web server and my POST request can include a JSON document that I would like to be saved in a server side database. Um, the delete is typically used to delete a resource. Uh, for example, if I want to delete a customer uh, information from a server side service. So for this video, we will implement the most commonly used RESTful API methods or HTTP methods, which are the GET and the POST request. A couple of more HTTP components to discuss would be the uh, concept of the URLs. And the URL is basically just the address where we would like uh, the HTTP request to go to. So here's an example for a real RESTful API URL. So you see here that we define the HTTP protocol. Then since it's a web technology, this looks like we're trying to access a website. And uh, for this particular example, we have a query at the end to narrow down the piece of information we are looking for. At the end, uh, one last component to discuss is the HTTP body. So the HTTP body is basically the body of your message. So, for example, if I send a GET request to this URL, I will get a response that will have a JSON body, so a JSON HTTP body, and the body will basically be a JSON document that will have an inspiring code for the day. Now let's explore the Gorilla Toolkit that we'll be using to build the RESTful API for our video today. So Gorilla Web Toolkit is a very popular collection of packages written in the Go language that helps you write advanced web applications with relative ease. So if you go to gorillatoolkit.org, you will get to the main page and first thing you find in the main page would be the main packages included in the Gorilla Web Toolkit. So you can use each package individually based on uh, your project. For this video section, we'll be focusing a lot on the Gorilla Mux package and the Gorilla WebSocket package. Uh, for the web sockets, we will be discussing them uh, in a future video, but for this video, we will focus on the MOX package. So what is the MOX package? The MOX package implements a request router and dispatcher, meaning that it helps you to write code to decide what to do when you get an HTTP request from a client. As we mentioned earlier in the video, uh, when you send an HTTP request, you send it to a specific URL or address, and then you need your RESTful API server or web server in general to perform a certain action based on the URL address you included in your HTTP request. A request router is how your code will identify the URL address of an incoming HTTP request and it also what helps you implement actions associated with a certain URL. <clears throat> so first thing we need to do to use this package is go get it using the go get command, then we import it in our code. So we'll be doing that today. We'll see how to do that. And if you scroll down, you will find a good overview of how to use the package. So in order to provide a practical tutorial of how to use a package, let's dive into the code. So today we will write the RESTful API server for the Dino software system. So I created a folder called Dino API, which lives underneath the Dino web portal 
folder which all live inside the dino folder in my go uh, source folder at the go workspace so the dino api is where our restful api uh, will live so it has two files api handlers and dino api so api handlers um, will basically describe the actions that we want to happen when we receive a web request or an http request the dino api.go which is the main file in the uh, package folder is where we would define what is called the request router so the request router does the mapping between an incoming request and the action that we need to execute at the server side uh, to respond to that request uh, let's see what that means so first we define the package the package is called dino uh, api and then we will import a bunch of uh, packages um, i can actually it's better to just to be more idiomatic probably should do this so that looks more uh, idiomatic and so basically uh, what this API would do is the following it will accept two types of requests an HTTP get request for searching so if our uh, RESTful API server uh, receive this request, it will go and search in the Dino database for the information requested and then return it to the requester. So in order to search in the Dino database, we need to specify the search criteria. By search criteria, I mean whether we need to search by nickname or by type. That is because uh, if I go to the Dino database layer here, so if you remember from the previous section, we implemented methods to allow searching uh, a dinosaur by its nickname or by its type. So we'll expose those two search types to the uh, RESTful API server. So if a user sends a request that looks like this, we will search for a dinosaur with the nickname Rex, and then we will return it as JSON to the HTTP client. Otherwise, if the user uses this URL, then we would understand from this that they want to search by type and will return all the velociraptors that we can find in our database. Perfect. So that is search. Now, our uh, RESTful API server will also accept HTTP POST requests. And for HTTP POSTs, we will allow ads or edits to our database. So this is a case where uh, the RESTful API client would like to add a new dinosaur or edit the information of an existing dinosaur uh, from our dino database. So in order to add a dinosaur, the URL needs to look like this. So it needs to go to the relative URL uh, API for slash dinos for slash add or for edits, the request needs to go to uh, for slash API for slash dinos for slash edit. So those and those all the URLs mentioned so far here are relative URLs. And by relative URLs, I mean that they need to be preceded by um, our either our DNS or our IP address and port number. So in case of a local host, uh, it might look something like this, for example. So. This would be the IP address, this would be the port number, and then this will be the rest of our URL. Let's do this for now. Perfect. So let's see how we can use the Gorilla Web Toolkit to get that done. Um, before we do that, I actually just noticed a typo here where I use a Y in Dino instead of um, Dino is an I, like the rest of our code. 
So let's go and change that. So now let's go back to the code. So in the Dino API uh, package, we have two main functions. The run API function and the run API on router function. So the run API function is a function that we would use if we need to write a, a self-contained RESTful API server for um, our Dino software system. Whereas uh, run API on router actually attaches uh, the URL routers or the HTTP routers uh, related to uh, the Dino RESTful API into an existing router. So it takes a router uh, as an argument and then it attaches URLs and actions to it here. The actions are there. So uh, let's start by exploring the run API function because it's more it's uh, more straightforward and it's mostly what we need for this video. So the running API function takes two arguments. The first argument is a string and the second argument is a Dino database handler type. So in the first argument, we will get an endpoint address uh, that we can uh, run our a web server on for our RESTful API. So by endpoint, I basically mean um, just like the uh, address of our HTTP server. So an example for an endpoint would be uh, maybe something like this. So that is an example of a TCP endpoint that we can use for um, as um, an HTTP web server endpoint since HTTP is built on top of TCP. So this is what we expect from the endpoint string here. We need this in order to listen on uh, for incoming HTTP requests. The second argument is a database handler. So the DynoDB handler was the interface that we wrote in the previous section. So this is the interface that defines all the different methods we can use to access and manipulate data in our Dino database. And um, from the previous section, we added four concrete implementations for this uh, interface. One was for MySQL, one for SQLite, one for PostgreSQL, and one for MongoDB. Now going back here, we see here, uh, we start to see here the power of Gorilla uh, Mux. So first thing we need to do in order to create um, um, HTTP router with Gorilla Mux is called mux.newrouter. And this will return a new router object that we can use. So an HTTP router, uh, like we described before, is how you would bind a URL like this with an action like search. Same thing as binding this URL with the add action. So when we create our router, we pass it to our uh, second function. So this is a common code design to um, support and encourage code reuse and to avoid repeating code. That is because from this point forward till the last line of code here, we need only the functionality implemented in the run API on router function. And then when the run API on router function returns, we can call listen and serve. Uh, so let's look at the run API on router function. What does it do? So it takes the router object so it's a pointer to mux.router and it takes the database handler uh, interface object then the first thing it does is to create a new dino uh, rest api handler so before we move forward it's time to discuss the dino rest api handler 
which is uh, the object defined in the second file in our Dino API folder. So let's look at the API handlers to go. So the API handlers to go defines a type called Dino REST API handler. And the job of this object is to define the actions that we would like to happen when um, HTTP request arrives to our RESTful API HTTP server. Dino REST API handler is of type struct and it contains a single field called the uh, DB handler. And DB handler is basically our uh, Dino DB handler um, interface type. So first thing we need to do here um, is to create a constructor for the Dino REST API handler object. So this is a constructor uh, function. It's called new Dino REST API handler. So if you remember, this is a function we called here to create the object. And it takes a Dino DB handler uh, type as an argument and returns a pointer to Dino REST API handler. So uh, inside we use struct literals to create a Dino REST API handler pointer object where uh, the DB handler field contains the past uh, DB handler object. This also shows you the power of interfaces where uh, this DB, uh, Dino DB handler object could support either Mongo or uh, MySQL or Postgres or what have you. And we didn't have to worry about the concrete types of any of uh, those implementations. Now let's look at the next function. So the next function is an important one. The next function is how we do the search. To understand what this function does, we have to see first how we use it. So the mux package in the Gorilla Web Toolkit gives you a lot of flexibility when you need to define uh, your relative URL path and the HTTP actions uh, that you need to assign to it. So first thing the mux package allows you to do is create what is called a sub router. So what's a sub router? So if you look at all the relative URLs here in the uh, in the API descriptions, you'll find that forward slash API forward slash dinos are common for on every single relative URL. So basically that means that we can create a sub router on this relative URL, the forward slash API forward slash dinos and then this sub router will expose the other relative URLs. To create a sub router based on um, a path prefix, which is what that is, right? A path a prefix for our relative URL, then we need to use this syntax. So we call r.path prefix. So r here is our mux router, the gorilla mux router uh, pointer object. And path prefix is a method that takes a string as an argument, and that string would be our path prefix, like here. And then we would call dot subrouter. So mux allows what is called chaining. And by chaining, I mean that you can chain any collection of methods together to obtain a desirable outcome. So in this case, we used chaining to create a sub router from a path prefix. So the path prefix method returns an object of type route or pointer to route and route supports the sub router um, method. And the subrouter method returns us back a router, a pointer to a mux router uh, object type. Basically what that means is that uh, this object, the API router object, which takes the output of this, is of type pointer to max.router, max.router. 
and we can then use any methods that uh, Max.Rider supports on this variable. And that's exactly what we do after. So now that we have a sub router that gets activated whenever we receive an HTTP URL request that starts with for slash API for slash dinos, it's now time to define the functionality associated with the rest of the relative URLs. So first, um, the Gorilla Web Toolkit has a method called methods, which can take a number of arguments describing an HTTP method type. So as mentioned here in the API description, we support an HTTP GET for those URLs or an HTTP POST for those URLs. So let's look at the GET. So to define a URL router that expects a GET method going to this URL, we need to first call methods with a GET string as an argument so that the Gorilla router, uh, Mox router would understand that this is a, a URL that we would like to capture if it's coming with an HTTP GET method. And then methods return a pointer to a route type. The route type is a type in the uh, Gorilla Mux package, which supports other methods that we can chain together in order to obtain a desirable outcome. If you remember, uh, the path prefix a method returned a route type as well. So we can attach the methods uh, method with a path uh, method because again, path is a method of uh, the type pointer to route. And you can see here that path also returns route and hence such chaining. So methods that are supported by the route type, pointer to route type, can be chained together nicely. So the path method is, is obvious. Um, this is where you define your relative URL path. So in our case, uh, in case of the HTTP get for search, we have two similar uh, paths. One would be forward slash nickname, forward slash like a nickname that we can search for. The other one is forward slash type and then forward slash a dinosaur type. So instead of writing two separate statements to define those, we can use pattern uh, recognitions and variables with the mux package. So we use a single path to represent this and to represent that. So the trick here would be the curly braces. So when we use curly braces like this, the mux package will understand that this is more of a variable and not an absolute uh, URL path. So we defined here a variable called search criteria and another variable called search. Now when we get to the that point here, we see here that we have defined all the information related to the incoming HTTP uh, GET requests for search. So the definition of the incoming requests here is done. And now the remaining piece of code here would be to attach an action or some functionality to it. And we do that by the handler func uh, method. So the handler func method belongs to the route object. So the same object uh, that was produced by the methods uh, method and the path method. And handler func takes a function as an argument. The function that it takes as an argument looks like this. The argument function supports two internal arguments. One is an HTTP.response writer and the other is a pointer to an HTTP.request. So if you look here, you notice here that I pass the search handler function to the handler func method. So the search handler function here then this is a search handler function of our Dino REST API handler. You find here that it supports the same signature that is supported by uh, the handler func method.